This is it, people. This is what you've been waiting for. This is Everyday Celebrity Podcast. The podcast for everyday people with everyday problems trying to find everyday solutions to accomplish everyday goals. Let's start the show. You, 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 you. Welcome to another episode of Everyday Celebrity Podcast, number one podcast in Oakland, number one podcast in the Bay Area. And today is a special day. We have a special guest. When you... When you think of Philly, you think of Rocky, you think of Carhartt, Beards, Muslims, and Jones. <laughs> and you also think about one of the up-and-coming, fast-rising, sick fashion designers, Dom. Welcome to the show. Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me, man. It's a pleasure. Now... We are in Long Beach, not Philadelphia. Correct. Which is very surprising to me how a, a youngin' like you migrated all the way to the West Coast. How did you end up in Los Angeles? I ended up here, man, just following my dreams for real, for real. Like, I started traveling over here 2012. Uh, and uh, I was coming over here often, bro, like four or five times a year. And uh, I wasn't happy with my situation at home as far as me, like, working and being at the same company for a long time that I just put my two weeks in and drove cross country. And I've been here going on three years now. What uh, what position was that that you would you that you quit? Oh, I was just working at the WIC office in Philly. Oh, okay. Some regular in the office bullshit all day. So why the West Coast, though? Man, like, look at it. It's beautiful. Like, right now, bro, it's, like, snowing and shit back home. Like, uh-huh. it's beautiful. So, I got, my, as soon as I stepped off the plane, I knew, like, this is where I wanted to be. So, I just. Did you have family out here already? No. No? Nobody. Nobody? I yeah. moved out here with uh with two two old friends, but mm. they went back home. They couldn't, you know. Okay. Okay. So, growing up in Philly, how how was that like for you? It was uh, because cool. you know a lot of people think Philly is like real grimy and like it, bad and shit. I mean, like it depends on where you at, but like for me, like growing up, like of course I seen like the everyday hood shit that goes on in the ghetto. But I, me, I follow my other outlets. Like I always play ball. Mm-hmm. I play like AU basketball, so I got to travel and link up with other dudes from around the city. That wasn't on the on the rah rah and the the BS that'll keep you grounded from yeah. even wanting to go that route. So it was cool for me. What part of Philly? Germantown. Okay, okay, okay. That's like up top, what they call it, uh-huh. Germantown. Okay. Uh, so when you when you when you left Philly, mm-hmm. how old were you? I was what am I about to be? Thirty five. I was thirty two. Thirty two. Yeah. And then you came straight to then California. I came straight to California. Were you like traveling to other uh, other places before you? Yeah, uh, I mean, I went to like Florida, a couple of spots like Florida, New Orleans, uh-huh. Vegas, but I kept coming here. Yeah, like, this was the spot that I kept coming. So you basically just fell in love with the weather. The weather, yeah, for real, for the weather. Okay, so it was Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, I've been I, I've been to the Bay, but recently, mm. and I I fuck with it up there too. Mm. It's a different vibe from up here, but it's it's still cool. And it, everything was shut down when I was there. Yeah, I yeah. still had a great time. Yeah, Northern California is totally different from Southern California. Yeah. It's like two different states. Yeah, it's cold up there, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Northern California vibe better, at, personally. But, you know, it's each his own. So, uh, you have a fashion fashion brand. Correct. What's it called? Sick Days. Sick Days? Yes. So, how I did you? It, I spell it S-Y-C-K uh-huh. for Smart Young Creative Kids. Mm. So, so when was that created? This the brand. I started, let's say, like 2012. 2012. Yeah, but like when I first started, it was just like me going to the going to like thrift stores, buying stuff at thrift stores, and uh-huh. re- just doing my thing to it and selling it to like friends and stuff like that. Mm. But that's how I started. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, you started you started sick days. So, what got you into? Were you always into fashion? 
Uh, I always did my own thing as far as like dressing and stuff like that. I never thought I was like into fashion that I would even want to start a brand or do anything like that. Yeah. Because coming, like, coming from like spots in Philly, that was like kind of, you would hear of people having brands, but like really somebody like taking off and doing something with it, mm-hmm. you ain't, you ain't hear too much of that. Mm-hmm. Was, um, was this always like a, a point that you wanted to do, like make your fashion brand? Like when you were growing up, were you always saying, "Oh, I'm gonna create a, a fashion line"? No. no. When I was growing up, I just I played hoops. Mm-hmm. I played basketball, so that's all I was thinking about. Like, mm-hmm. nigga gonna go D one, nigga going like you feel me? I wasn't thinking like anything okay. that got to do with clothes. I just know I like to look a certain way. And yeah. Going outside looking a certain way. So when did when did it become a reality? Uh, when I sold my first piece, like when I made something and my homies was like, yo, this is hot. And I was mm. like, all right, I might as well just keep going. What kind of piece was it? Like a shirt or like something? A, yeah, like a, a denim jacket that I like bleached up and mm. did a bunch of crazy shit too. Okay. What's the hardest, uh, I mean, people, everyone has like a brand of those, like shirts and shit, you know what uh, I'm saying? What's the hardest thing about creating uh, your own line, do, do you think? creating uh for real for real was it's like for me when i started it was like finding quality mm. you feel what i'm saying it was like that was the hardest thing for me like yeah you can go down you can go down the street and it'd be five five print shops you feel what i'm saying but if you don't know nothing about quality mm. you going in there and they just taking your money for real for real. it's like it's no hard feelings but mm. taking your bread and i experienced that so mm-hmm. for me it was like finding that that quality printer the quality shirts where i'm like damn I, I like this i'm happy with this so where do you normally go to get your uh your shit uh right now i go to a screen printer in, in lancaster pa okay I've been using him for since 2014 or something like that. i thought you were gonna say lancaster california i was no, like no, what no, the no, fuck no, no. I ain't never <laughs> in, uh, lancaster pa it's like uh, a small town in pennsylvania yeah so how long you been working with him I've been working on them since 2014. Yeah, okay, okay. So you say you play hoop? Yeah, I play ball. You know, a lot of niggas say they play ball. Are you yeah, good? I really, I, I was, I was nice. Crazy. I was just talking to my homies about that. The same dudes that I like play AAU ball with. Uh, we always stay to get like stay in contact. So we just was talking about like hoop, and I'm done though right now. <laughs> I can't, you ain't paying me to. Play what what's, uh, what school did you play for? You played in high school? I, I didn't play for my high school team, but. Like, I play AU ball mm. and shit like that, but I never played for my high school. Yeah, right. which you, was a mistake on my end. Do you say you love basketball more than uh, fashion? No, no fashion. Yeah. Okay, so that's your that's your passion. Yeah, right now. Yeah, like I like right now. I'm not playing no basketball, but yeah, for like even if I wasn't doing a brand, I would still be like buying cool pieces and shit like that. Uh, so for me, like hoops, is, I'm done with hoops. Okay. So your brand, um, I'm assuming your brand is not where you want it to be right know. now. So what? Uh, what's the hard thing about growing your brand? Do you think the hard part about growing it is is uh, especially right now with COVID, is like you can't do any pop ups, you can't do any events mm. where people can actually touch and feel your hard work that you that you put in. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So like to to see a shirt on on Instagram or on Facebook is is one thing. Yeah, but to actually like feel that piece in person and see the the details of the screen printing and the details and the stitching of the pants and stuff like that is a is a different animal. You know mm. what I'm saying? So right now that's like the hardest part. But uh, the support has still been good though mm. throughout all of that. But that's my that's my struggle right now is not being able to, to have that pop up where I can let people feel and touch it. Do you ever come to uh, when you were in the Bay Area? Did you bring clothes out there to like uh, sell and shit? No, I didn't. Actually, when I came out there, I I wasn't I wasn't working on any pieces right now. I was working on like getting ready for what I just released because mm. I figured like times was tough and it was like a fire i went up there the weekend with the fires up mm. in san francisco so i was like i'm gonna just go out there just to check it out but i ain't bring nothing with me and you just released a, a collection right correct you want to explain that uh yeah i reached like i reached a uh, i recently released a collection on uh the 4th of february which is my brother's birthday uh rest in peace to him and uh i released some dope pieces uh cut and sew pants 
which is like a chef style pants, but still tapered at the bottom. Mm. I released those. I released the uh, two hoodies, the hat that I'm wearing now, mm. and uh, two t-shirts. Okay. So for me, it was like it was some of the best work because the production got pushed back. Mm. And I, I had like a set date to release this like in January. Mm. I was like, I got to do January. I got to do January because I haven't released anything in so long because there's so much going on. So I like I might as well just take my time and just perfect my craft and get better and drop something that I really love. Yeah. And uh, with production on hats and production on hoodies and everything being pushed back so much, I was able to release it on my brother's birthday. And this hat right here was like one of his favorite designs. Mm -hmm. I did it a while ago on like a denim hat and he loved it. Mm -hmm. So for me to be able to put out some of my best work to me to this date on his birthday, yeah, it worked out. It was special. So yeah. That's nice, 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 nice. So uh, do you actually, because you know a lot of people say they have brands and shit, but um, they don't really design it. It's just their name attached to the shit. So are you involved in every single pro uh, point of the process? I'm by myself. So you so you do all the yeah. stitching and all that no, shit. I don't do all the stitching, but I, I like I I create the patterns, get the pattern made from a pattern maker, uh, and, and then like you that. you create the design and all that. Yes, the logo and all that. Yes, I work with my 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 graphic designer on uh, creating logos and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm really hands on with everything that I'm doing. You want to explain uh, where the name Sick Days came from? I mean, you you told us what it stands for, but what, what did you how did you come up with the name? I came up with the name. Uh, Pretty much just like chilling in the crib, mm. not working, not 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 doing no, doing nothing with myself for real, for real. Like trying to figure it out. Like working at a bar as a bouncer, mm. happy with all that. And then once I uh, once I started working on the brand, I'm like, damn, like I'm just in here creating stuff, but I don't have a name for it. Mm. And then linked up one of the homies, and he used to always just be like, sick days, sick days, and I'm like. He was, like, was he saying that because that nigga kept calling out sick at work or something? He was like, shit, we ain't had no job to call out for him. Like, <laughs> 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 we was unemployed. Like, we was, we was fucked up. And we, I was just trying to figure out a way and just be that one to, you know, take a step in. We we all followed from there. And figured was this pre-move from Philly or was no, it, this was, this was out here? Philly, like oh, this is in Philly. Okay. Like, like, struggling shit. Like, uh. trying to figure this shit out. So the brand was created in Philly. In Philly. And migrated to, migrated to West Coast. To okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Like I never like when I my first time coming here, I bought like a I was looking at a picture on my phone the other day. I bought probably like a thousand dollars worth of gear. Mm. Damn. That was just me and kids everywhere, bro. Like all this money from my pocket, but I was like, fuck it. Like, I mean, well, that's what you gotta do at first. Yeah. You gotta give away you you gotta give away free shit. Cause a lot of niggas ain't gonna see when I see niggas on the on the corners, right? Like with CDs and shit, selling their music. I'm like, why are you trying to sell a CD and expecting a nigga that's just walking by to buy your shit when he don't even know, don't even know you, don't even know if he gonna like your shit, but you expect him to buy it. You should just be passing out the CDs for free. For real. You know what I'm saying? Get your name out there. And, and if then... He, if he give you a tip, then you accept it. Yeah, yeah, name. yeah. I never... Yeah, so you got to make money to from the start. Yeah. So, I mean, that was... It feels like a bad thing, but shit, something that has to be done. So fucking um, we got sick days, Philly. Yeah, I'm taking a little Hennessy break, real quick. So I want to ask you a question about recently. There was uh, you know that big thing with uh Gucci and shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about, where they did the blackface? Yeah. And then you still have niggas that go and, like, line up buy to buy the shit. stuff. And basically all these European uh, brands, Gucci, Fendi, like, DR, these 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 European, these these companies don't really give a fuck about black people and they shit, right? Oh. But black people are so obsessed with that, with those, uh, with name brands. Correct. So how do you feel, how do you feel about that? Do you think niggas are, like, bamboozled? Yeah, they on some bullshit. But for me, I never, I was never like uh, in the like high end fashion before any had ever happened. Like, but like the lining up for for someone that you know that don't fuck with our our people, but they love our culture because our culture is the one that's 
consistently in every song you hear Gucci mm. Fendi or you ain't wearing Gucci and Fendi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or you ain't doing this or you ain't wearing that, then you you down here. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? But in all reality, it's like y'all fucking with somebody that don't fuck with us. Mm. Mm. And, and y'all know it. And they making the mockery right in front of us. They still from our 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 young creators that's coming up. They, they take their ideas. Yeah. They make their own shit. And we won't go support that 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 small black person artist that's coming up uh-huh. we'll go support gucci though and they just copying and stealing their designs and shit and putting it on their shit why do you think black people why do you think it's so hard for black people um, because everyone says oh support black businesses we should buy black we should buy back but black people don't really support black people why do you think that is? that's a tough question uh I don't know, man. And when they do support, it's like everything got to be perfect. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know how you can you can go get a shirt from Dior or Gucci. And if you wash the shirt or whatever the case, whatever you may do, the shirt shrink or the shirt, they won't say nothing. Yeah. But if they buy it from like a, somebody that worked their ass off to get this out and like really appreciative <laughs> of your... Of your of your purchase, yeah, they blast. They putting you on blast. They telling their friends not to buy from you. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. We don't wear that no more. Like it's it's, it's weird. Like, and it's crazy. If if let's say let's say Jay Z for example wears your hat, right, on and takes a picture with your hat on Instagram, your shit will blow up overnight, right. But him wearing the when him wearing your hat will increase the value of your hat. Right. Even though your hat is just your hat, you just right. a nigga in the house doing it by yourself. Right. It, it doesn't compare to a fucking Gucci hat. Mm-hmm. But the fact that Jay Z wore it right. makes it uh, that important. And that's all it takes. But niggas won't do that. Yeah. That's the crazy thing. Cause down under, like, the, the power that we have is as a as a race and as a as a whole on everything from entertainment to sports, like we have the power to shift shit and it really be all black mm-hmm. you feel what i'm saying and i feel like when if when when that day comes it's like we're going to really show how powerful we are but like yeah if i was a hooper or a rich athlete or something like that like why would i be wearing gucci and dior let me find this person that's in the hood or yeah come from the same shit that a fan of me playing ball like you get what i'm saying like Mm. We can we can be powerful, bro. Do you think the fashion industry is more racist than the uh, than um like the music industry? I would say yeah, because it's like even the 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 black designers that's doing it, they doing it under white under white folks or under white folks label mm. or their brand or whatever. Yeah. So, how do you feel about uh? What's that nigga's name? Uh, from Louis Vuitton, the head designer, black dude, Virgil. Virgil. Yeah, how do you feel about his shit? He's, uh, I mean, he's his. Some of his shit is cool, but I feel like he. Uh, his shit is garbage he, to me. He take a lot of shit from from young dudes too. <laughs> he, he, like he. You think he designs good clothes? No, no. I, I I have never owned anything off white though. Oh yeah, me neither. But yeah, it's never, just that I, shit is ugly. Yeah, I try not to pay attention to it. Like the. I, I can't this is just not my cup of tea even with the with the Jordans and shit like that like I like to be honest bro it's like if you took his name off that shit mm-hmm. would you still think those were high the Jordans yeah like the Air Force Ones like well like Jordans that. Jordans haven't been hot that's why they keep coming out with these retros right. these new Jordans are ugly as fuck right. that's why uh, all the retros keep coming out cause the retros back in the old days the Jordans was was yeah. nice but even with the retros I feel like I feel like they're they're fucking watered. They watered down now. It's like mm. now if you don't got a pair of Jordan ones, it's like oh your fit ain't it. Like bro, every you gonna go outside, yeah. you gonna see every fucking body with that. Yeah, there's too many. There's too many colors, of colorways, like, the Jordan ones. And those that was a shoe that was like Jordan most hated shoe. Like nobody was buying that. I remember they came was out, ugly. They came out when I was in high. Like I think I was in my freshman year, so like oh one or something like that. They came mm. out and them joints sat. Nobody was fucking with them. Like, oh, those the corny Jordans. I bought one pair of retro Jordan ones, but this was back in two thousand and uh, like two thousand and five or something when they came out. When the when they first started to do the retros, yeah. they came out with the Jordan ones, but they were all patent leather. Yeah, and I uh, I bought those. 
But those are the only ones uh, that I ever bought. Because I don't really like the fucking uh, Jordan ones to me. Yeah, they... Shit's ugly. And the off-white, off-white. Niggas don't buy off-white. It's all white. Uh, that's all. That's white. That's white culture. White people buy all that shit. They, they think it's fucking hot. Yeah, they can have it. Because if you ask a nigga, the nigga's going to be like, nah, man, I don't fuck with... Uh, I don't fuck with Virgil. Yeah. But I do think uh, the fashion industry is racist as shit. And I, feel, I feel like they, they take a lot of shit from our culture. They use they use our culture to be the the face of their shit. You know what I'm saying? Like they'll they'll bless them with some gear or mm. some type of endorsement or some shit like that, and mm. they eat that shit up and they put that shit out through music or rather it's through sports or whatever it is, just to keep our people in tune with that shit. How important is uh, ownership to you? Like owning your brand. Owning it is very important. Mm. Like that's that's the most important piece to to you doing anything. You feel what I'm saying? So would you, uh, let's say, someone big recognizes you and say, "Okay, let me let me buy you, let me buy the sick day's name." Would you sell it? You might as well buy the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that's everything. what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, everything. Yeah, hell yeah. You'll sell it. Yeah, you can have it. Okay, okay, you okay. can have it. Because for me, it's like I'm always gonna find a way to create mm. and i uh, always just thinking about what's next for me and for real for real, like the right opportunity came and somebody loved what i'm doing that much that they want to purchase it from me mm. hey go ahead mm. so growing up in philly did you grow up with both parents all right so i grew up with both parents but my pops didn't live at live at home but uh-huh. nigga was like a mile away he lived like not too far from me so so I had both parents, but just not in the same house. Were you close with your pops? Yeah, for sure. I talk every day. Still to this day, we talk every day. Yeah, okay. Are they both? Are they still in uh, Philly? Yeah, yeah. Did they ever come out here and visit you? Yeah, my pops was just out here, and I think September he was out here. He came out here for a couple of times. First time, it was actually his first time on the plane too. So that was that was real dope. I was happy that he actually came out and fucked with me. How many uh, siblings do you have? My one brother, one sister. Okay, and the one brother passed. Yeah, he passed away. Yeah. Where's your sister? At? She's in Philly too. She's in Philly too. Yeah. None of them wanted to uh, migrate out here. Nah. Yeah, okay. Okay. I had my mama talk it, but she ain't, mm. she ain't trying to come live out here. Mm. So when you uh, when you came to California, was it hard for you to adjust to to the West Coast? Uh, like for my first week, I really I felt like I was on vacation. But it was mm-hmm. it was fucking me up because I was I would come outside and I would see the Pennsylvania plates on my car and I'd be like, bro, like you're really not on vacation. <laughs> uh-huh. So like, but after that, like after I found my first like found the apartment and stuff like that in the first week, and then we mm-hmm. moved in, it was just like I just adjusted quick. You said we moved in? Yeah, it was me and two other people. Oh, okay, moved. okay. But I was I was excited to be here, so for me it was just like a long time coming for real, for real. Uh-huh. So three niggas moved out here? Yeah, yeah. And the other two went back? Yeah, they went back, yeah. Because they couldn't, they didn't like it? I mean, that's what they say, but, I mean, who knows? But, yeah, they bounced. Now, when you moved out here, you know, you got Philly bitches and you got Kylie bitches. A big difference. There is a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big difference. Which one do you prefer? Sorry, Philadelphia, but <laughs> <laughs> damn the women out here, man. It's a different vibe. You, you like an LA bitch more than a Philly bitch? I mean, it depends on what I'm what I'm looking for. Like what I'm like. A Philly LA bitch will jump. LA chicks are like more cool and. The Philly like, bitch will fight a nigga with yeah, you. Yeah, they will, but some Philly chicks be cool as shit too. So it depends on like what what what, what mood I'm in right at that mm. point, that time. So when you moved out here, how long did it take for you to settle down with a chick? Right. I mean, I would I would meet chicks, but that would be, you know, that would just be it. But mm. I wasn't doing no settling down. I just got here. Are you single now? Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm assuming you fuck with uh, white bitches out here, right? I tried, bro. I tried to go out <laughs> with a few white joints, but that shit, that shit was weird, bro. Uh it was weird shit. It was it was too weird for me. Okay. So I tried that shit. It was like, nah, this ain't for me. Mm. So when you was playing A, you ball. Did you play with anyone famous? That's like in the league or anything now? 
No, I didn't play with any. I didn't play with anybody. I played against a lot of dudes. Like coming in, in Philly, it was a lot of dudes that went like overseas or went Division One and stuff like that. Mm. Even, like some of my homies went to like small D one schools and stuff like that. Mm. But play against anyone famous, no. Okay. Okay. So what? Uh, your brand, right? Sick days. Uh-huh. If someone was to like look at your brand. When I even look at it, we'll come up to you and ask you, what's the vibe of your brand? Like, explain it. Like, what kind of feel? It's, uh, is it like streetwear? Like, is it like fa- uh, fancy streetwear? Is it what? I feel like it's... I feel like Skater it's, style mixed with like, industri- like indus- industrial. I feel like it's for, 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 it's for everybody. Like, it's like, it's chill. It's not, it's not too much. I wouldn't call it streetwear because like that's the term for everybody shit now. Yeah. Like no matter what you doing, you just making straight sweat sweatshirts and sweatpants and it's streetwear. Mm. But for me it's like uh it's super chill. It's shit that I would wear. Like that's how I create for real, for real. Like mm. I really don't create off looking at like what everybody else is doing. I create off of shit like, yo, I would really wear this. I would fuck with this. Mm. So it's like it's more so just like my style. So if you fuck with me and Fuck with what I'm doing and how how I how I kick it. Mm. And you'll fuck with what what I'm pitting out. What do you get uh, your uh, fashion inspiration from? My friends. Your friends? Yeah. Like the 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 niggas that I have around me, like be on some mm. chill, cool shit. Mm. So I like really create off of off of that type of shit mm. more so than just like looking at what everybody else is doing and then be like, all right, that's what I want to do. Mm. do something similar to that oh you so you're like you're like into like second hand shopping and all that yeah i thrift every fucking day for real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> every mm. day it's not one day that i probably take like two days off a month mm. majority of the time like i'm at least in the goodwill every day or salvation army or some mm. shit every day how long did it take for you to uh from the idea of your this this line that you just created right mm. How long did it did it take from the start of it to actually putting it out? Until like the, the recent drop. Mm-hmm. So when did I put this out? February. So the idea of it started probably in like I want to say like October. Mm-hmm. Maybe like October, and then I just started. Uh, once I start like created the the items that I wanted, I started like doing production in like November. Mm. thinking that i would have everything by january but like i said it worked out perfectly was it a uh was it a struggle did you find any um because you know i know you said about the covid yeah. shit was, was that the only thing that like hindered you and shit uh yeah for real because real, uh that was the struggle just because like like i said i ordered these hoodies and i'm thinking like they're gonna be here at a certain time mm. and then they ship the shirts I shipped the hoodies, but they said they never got here. I mean, they, my screen printer said they never came. Mm. So when he went back to reorder them, they were out of stock. Mm. And they say three weeks away. Mm. And then that three weeks coming, they still out of stock. Mm. So it was like, that was a struggle. But other than that, nah. This was, so, um, how many, how many lines do you have? How many, like, lines have I put out? Well, not lines. You know how many, uh, what do you call them shits? What's that? Collections? Collections, yeah. How many collections uh, do you have? I've been putting out collections for like I'm gonna say like ten. So you have ten collections? Yeah. Like just yeah. from like over the years though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So a nigga can't go back and say, oh, I want a shirt that was from collection five. I yeah. mean no, not really. Unless <laughs> I unless I like post the shit or a lot of times I redo a lot of stuff that I did already. Uh, just because I'm out here and like yeah. these like it's new to everybody out here. Mm. So every collection, do you learn something new from like? Yeah. So every so so the next to, one can go more smoothly. Better. Like my last collection, I was fucking modeling, mm. and then I was like, bro, I can't do this shit this time. Like you put too much work and effort into this, and I I, I actually paid models this time because mm. I was like, I'm not I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Like, I really want to sit back and and watch this come together versus me being in it as being a model. Mm. So I definitely learned a lot from that because it's like you go on the website and you go look at the lookbook and it's me modeling the clothes. Like, mm. 
to me, I, when I outside looking in, it didn't look right to me. So yeah, I learned like, nah, nigga, you got to step it up. And even if you got to pay for it, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And the models, it was just niggas that you know? No, the actually models were like, I found them on Instagram. Oh, okay. So like uh, my homegirl, she had a, had a relationship with him. Mm. And then she reached out for him, reached out to him for me and uh pay like look, he willing to pay. That's mm. all they wanted to hear. Like, all right, well fuck <laughs> it. And they actually had like, like dope, some niggas. They actually had like dope followings on the on the uh online and so that worked mm. out. It was a good time. Everybody had fun. Have you ever collaborated with another uh designer to make something? I never collaborated with a designer, but I did collaborate with uh, a restaurant. Mm. So it was like a a bar back home in Philly, uh-huh. and they they have like craft they serve like craft beer, craft wine, yeah. And then they make like crazy creative burgers. So like they had like a peanut butter and jelly burger, mm. shit like that. And I collaborated with them on a the sandwich. So we did a collaboration burger, and then we did a collaboration uh, t shirt as well. Oh, so you made the t shirt for the burger? Yeah, yeah. What was the name of this place? It's called Lucky's Last Chance. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was actually dope, man. That was like. To make to pull that off, and I I really didn't think I was gonna be able to pull that off, but I was like writing in a book about it for like a year, a year and a half, mm. and uh, I actually made that shit happen, man. That shit was dope. Yeah, that's, that is dope. What is the biggest uh, accomplishment do you think you've uh, you've made with your with your brand? I'm gonna say honestly, I'm gonna say that just creating it, just like creating it in that 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 pop up I did with the with the the restaurant mm. like for me to just like go from just going down there and every day or every week i'm going down there mm. to like me having a sandwich on the menu and the sandwich is exactly what i get when i go in there all the time mm. like that was that was that was tight still on the menu no nah, it's not on the menu uh. anymore we actually pulled it to do a collab last summer but then covid hit mm. and that fucked everything up when was the last time you went back to philly i was in philly for christmas no my daughter's home in Philly, so. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I go home often. You only got one kid? Yeah, one. Yep. And she's still in Philly? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Baby mom, she's still in Philly also? Yeah, yeah. What happened with y'all? I mean, it's just two different, <laughs> two different, two different worlds. Like, I still fuck with her. It ain't uh, no, no bad feelings or nothing like that. Like, we gonna always be tight, but mm. it's just like, she got her mindset on what she wanna do. I got my mindset on what I wanna do. Mm. The shit just don't. I don't mesh, but we still got responsibility, and that's our daughter, so. How old is your daughter? She's seven. Seven? Yeah. yeah okay. You don't want any more kids? No, nah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done, bro. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm good. I mean, I love, there's nothing wrong with kids, but it's just like, for me, it's just like one and done, and I'm straight on that. Mm-hmm. It's expensive, man. So when you were, uh, <clears throat> so you came to L.A., right? Uh-huh. What was the first I'm pretty sure you had to find like employment and shit. Mm-hmm. What was the first place you were working? I was doing DoorDash. DoorDash? Yeah. Okay. I was doing DoorDash and fucking uh postmates. Brought it for my first year, I was like, I'm not working. Like I'm cool. I had unemployment coming in. I was like, I could pay my fucking rent. I ain't, I'm not You was getting California unemployment? No, I was getting PA unemployment. Uh, I was like, I'm not no I'm cool. I'm not doing no working. I'm fi- like, I'm gonna just work on trying to get shit out, trying to meet people, mm. but still figure out a way to have have some money in your pocket without, you feel me, without having to call back home or mm. ask anybody for bread. So I just like, fuck it, I'm going to just do this a couple of days a week and then the other couple of days a week, like just get out here, meet people, connect, do what you got to do to figure this shit out. Was you one of those niggas that were... uh who will sneak a fry and shit in the mouth? Nah, nah. <laughs> nah. Cause I, yo, I will feel, I will feel fucked up. Like I worked at McDonald's as a young boy. I used to like see the burgers get dropped on the floor and then <laughs> re wrap back up and then still. Damn, going. Like, niggas is really like, doing that. Yeah, for real. That shit is that's a that's a real thing. So for me, it's like to actually like put your hand in somebody's food and then you got to give it to them. I'm touching the steering wheel. I'm touching mm. the door of the restaurant. Like that's nasty as shit. Mm. So how was you? Uh, Getting your name out when you first moved out, were you, were you just like going out yeah, constantly was, and shit, being like a social person? Not really. Like I'm kind of to myself, but like for me to, 
like I didn't know like it's like coming out here and not knowing nobody. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I had one homie that I met out here in 2012. Yeah. So like me and him stayed cool, but like not knowing anybody outside of him, I knew that I just had to get out and just connect. You know mm. what I mean? So I would use the I would use stuff like Instagram to really connect with people versus just on it just to be on it. Mm. So I would use it like, yo, look, I'm new out here. Where this what's going on here? What's going on here? Mm. And then my father would go, oh, yeah, just come here or just come here. This is going on tonight. Just come here. And I would just go to those spots mm. and just connect with people. And that's mm. how I started building relationships out here. The two niggas you moved out here with, were they uh, striving to be uh, designers as well? No. One was striving to be a producer and the other one was striving to be a, ph- a photographer. Oh, okay. So you guys could have built like a little collective. Oh, a dope ass team. A dope ass team, for real, for real. Like right. I saw, I saw the vision, but everything not for everybody, bro. So mm. for me, it's like it's no love lost, but it's like, bro, I ain't going back to fucking Philly. Like, was you mad when they left? At first, I was. Mm. I ain't gonna lie, like you nigga, the rent twenty three hundred dollars in this apartment. <laughs> like, y'all think where y'all going? Where? But overall, though, it's like I thought. I sat back and I thought about it, and I really thought, my like, bro, like this, this your vision. You yeah, I mean, like this your dream. Mm-hmm. Like, who are you to be upset with them because it's just not for them, and just mm-hmm. because it's for you, don't mean it's for them. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like it's no love lost, but I ain't going back home until shit is right. You feel what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I got my daughter looking looking up to me, mm-hmm. and I'm missing her life. For me to just go back empty handed as I came as I came here. Like fuck no, my my, yeah. my shit would be my mental would be all fucked up. Like I gotta go back if I do ever go back home. You feel me? I gotta go back and be accomplished. Like mm-hmm. you know, just going back to be. All right, let me see. Who, let me hand me the paper. Who hiring? Nah, fuck that. That's what was your, what was your most uh, successful collection? Do you my, think my most successful collection was uh, my it's, last one? Your last the one? one that I dropped before this. Like I dropped like some sweatsuits and. People really fuck with them heavy. They sold pretty fast. Mm. And every time I drop socks, mm. for some reason, like, I don't know. I, I fucked up this collection. Bro. I don't know where <laughs> I was at. With everything being postponed and shit, yeah. I fucked up. And I, like, once I finished the collection, I rolled out, like, damn, my nigga, like, you ain't even order no fucking socks. Mm. And that'd be the piece that everybody be, like, looking for. Like, bro, what are new socks at? What's new? What socks mm. you got? Have you ever traveled over overseas? No, but I do want to go to Japan, though. Japan, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely on my bucket list. Why well, Japan? I don't know. I just fuck with I just fuck with the fashion over there. Like just how everybody just does their own thing. Let me tell you something about Japan. You been? No. Okay. I mean I've been to Singapore okay. just to buy shoes. Uh but Japan I mean yeah, that was the closest I've ever been to Japan. But Japan, them niggas see people in Japan are obsessed with black right. black culture, right? But they think they watch music videos. They they watch rap videos, right? And they think that's how niggas are dressed, like walking, right. just walking around right. on the street. Right. <laughs> they don't know this is a music video. You know what I'm saying? This is entertainment. Yeah, and so when J- people in Japan will take that style, and then that's why when you go to uh, when you see all these Japanese tourists and shit, they be all Prada, Gucci, Fendi out like like a motherfucker. Right. And, and I'm like, yo, niggas don't really dress like that. Right. Yeah, I some niggas dress like that though. Mm. Some niggas. Are yeah, but I'm talking about like the that. average nigga. They look like the Dior mascot, <laughs> the mannequin. Like, yeah, they yeah. Definitely, they'll definitely go head to toe. But yeah, J- J- yeah, they love they love black culture out there. That's for sure. You should. Yeah, do. That is true. Every fucking race love our. When are you gonna make that move? Uh, whenever it's safe to go back over there. Whenever everything open back up. Mm. I'm a. Uh, I'm gonna definitely take that trip. Okay, okay. You should always. You should go to Paris too. Paris. Yeah. yeah. Every everybody that's into fashion should go to Paris at least once one time in their life. I'll check. I'll add that to the bucket list as well. Because that's uh, Paris is where it's at. For that's my favorite uh city in the world or Paris. or place in the world. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. I love Paris. What Would shoes you, did you buy in Singapore? So I went to Singapore and. 2000 and what the year was this this was like in 2005 uh-huh. and you know how they have uh these big like sneaker cons and shit yeah. where all these like um sneaker heads and like 
people who uh, like buy, sell, and trade sneakers, they all, it's like a big they market, up, right? right? They all meet up and there's like this big event. So they had one in Singapore. And I went there to, uh, I bought some, like, I think I bought like three or four Air Force Ones. But there were like some exclusive Air Force Ones that I've never even seen before. So then I brought them back. And niggas was like, where the fuck did you get those? And all this right. other stuff. Cause I'm, I'm the only one out here that I've, I have that has them. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I've never seen anyone with these with these sneakers yet. So yeah, there were only Air Force ones. That's the only uh, thing I bought. Yeah, that's dope. But yeah, Singapore, it was crazy out there. It's very clean. Are you into sneakers? Yeah, definitely. That was my first love. What? Oh yeah, I still like. I don't buy as many. But you're not into like. I mean, what kind of sneakers are you into? Uh, I'm into. Say. I'm into everything. I'm into everything. I don't really have like a. I mean, of course, I always fuck with Nike more than anything. But right now, I'm wearing a lot more like New Balance. Uh, uh, growing up, I used to be into like like basketball sneakers. Yeah, but that, now I'm more into those like, were the, like for me those were the shits like the Tim Duncan's like all the big chunky bulky basketball shoes from yeah. like the 2000s, mm-hmm. especially the ones I couldn't afford. I remember working at McDonald's. I was ninth grade. And I think they bought like a pair of Allen Houston like phone posits. Yeah, and they were like two. They were like one of like the, when shoes were start just becoming like two hundred dollars. Like you see a two hundred dollars shoe, it's like mm. you can't ask your mom for that. Mm. I remember working extra hours at McDonald's to get that shit. My mom was like, "Look, you working? I ain't buying your trans pass. The trans pass is like the little pass you swipe to get to school every day." Yeah, she like, "I'm not buying it." Mm. Da, 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 da. Trans pass was like seventeen fifty. I think my check was two twenty. <laughs> <laughs> my check was two twenty. I'm like, all right, look, I got enough to get this trans pass. I can get lunch for one day. I gotta figure this out for two weeks, but I was like, nah, I went and got them kicks though. The Tim had, Duncan's? Yeah, no, they wasn't the they were Allen Houston's. I had to have them. Allen Houston had some shoes? Yeah, it was like some foam posit type joints. I had like two from Nike? on the side. This yeah, from Nike, yeah. Uh, they were crazy. Do you like you did you like those Patrick guns? No. As nah. a kid I did, but as an adult, no. Yeah. I remember I got the uh, the Hakeem Elijah ones, them Spaldings yeah, with the thirty four. They were dope as a kid, though. No, they weren't. Nigga. I got clown like a motherfucker crazy, when I came like, to school with those. And, and like in my neighborhood, like niggas, like, they got the Elijah ones. Like I fucked with them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I was the Elijah one fan. Though I remember in the eighth grade, I had some ponies. You remember ponies? Yeah, I do. See now, ponies now are like some top shoes. They right. like they lit. But back then. I remember I came to school in some ponies every because no one knew what no no one no one knew about them. They was like new, and that niggas clowned the shit out of me in the ponies. That's crazy. <laughs> What's your uh, favorite sneaker of all time? Favorite sneaker of all time is the Nike Tailwind. It's like super Tailwind. chill. Like I got like a white waffle bottom. Mm. Super duper chill. You can wear it with anything. Mm. Yeah, mine are the Jordan Sixes, the black and. Uh, Black and red ones. I actually just bought a pair of sixes uh, a couple of weeks ago. I just I think it's my this is my first pair of six. Yeah, this is my favorite. What's your favorite uh, brand? Clothing brand. Clothing brand, yeah. Uh, Stussy. Yeah, okay. Super clean. Do some dope shit like I uh, love the Stussy. Are oh, you into Carhartt? Yeah. Oh okay. yeah, on the East Coast you got to. It's cold. Yeah, yeah. Cold as fuck over there. <laughs> Yeah, that's when I when I look at your uh your line, it reminds me of uh I mean I mean kind of reminds me of Carhartt. I'm a little inspired bit. by a lot of that type of shit though, mm. like Carhartt, Dickies, like mm-hmm. just regular chill shit. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. that's the type of shit that inspires me to to create. Your new collection kind of gives me like a San Diego vibe a little bit. San Diego, it's very it's very like like beachy. Right. You get that? Yeah. I can I can see that, yeah. especially that with the colors and shit. Like yeah, that. the colors, the yeah. fucking like the t-shirts. It looks like yeah. It look, it, like I I used to be more like a black and black and white or black mm-hmm. and red and like I had a homie that used to be like, bro, like play with the colors. Like it's way more colors than just those four colors that you're using on everything. Yeah. And so for this, like I was just like, like you know what? Let me actually try to make that happen and mm-hmm. do something different than what I'm usually doing. And change the colors up, so I, I like it a lot. So when you went to the Bay Area, what was the, what was the purpose? Uh, just to get out of LA. I never I never been to the Bay, and I was just like, you know what, I want to go to Oakland. Mm. I had just came from Chicago probably like a couple of weeks before that. 
Mm. And then I was like, I want to go somewhere else. And I looked at the f- flights for the Bay. It was like dumb cheap. I was like, that's where I'm going. What did, what did, uh, what did you do out there? Uh, just got food. It wasn't really, nothing was really open. How long were you to, there? I think three days. Okay. I went to a couple thrift shops. Yeah. Uh, I rode the scooters all through LA. I mean, that's it through LA, all through like Oakland. Mm. I caught the train to San Francisco, got some food in San Francisco. Did you like San Francisco? Uh, it was cool. It was all right. I, mm. I like the, the feeling in Oakland better. Yeah. Cause yeah. it was like, where More I was black at, it was like gentrified. <laughs> yeah. But I walked to the store at night. And I felt Philadelphia when I turned the corner. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Like the slums, you feel what I'm saying? It was like, mm-hmm. oh. Where in Oakland were you staying? Ah, oh, damn, where the fuck was I at? I'm not even sure where it was at. I know it was like not too far from the airport. Oh, okay. So, so I had to, I went to get food in East Oakland. So I had to take a little, it was a nice little ride to get to East Oakland, probably like 15 minutes. Well, if you were by the airport, you were, you were damn near in East Oakland anyway. Yeah. Cause East Oakland. That's like the wrong place to stay if you just visiting. When I got to East Oakland, I was like, dude, this shit look different. Yeah. And you should have stayed downtown or like, nah, like but North Oakland or nah, somewhere. I feel like it worked out though, because I met the dudes that, told mm-hmm. me about you so mm-hmm. for me it was like for me bro i like to be around my people you feel what i'm saying like somebody that's down to earth mm-hmm. that's that's not afraid to have a conversation that's not on the weird shit like mm-hmm. those are the type of people i like to be around so if it's like a gentrified spot that's in the hood or whatever the case may be yeah i'd rather be there than downtown and everybody want to walk by you or everybody's visitors i want to be where the people that's mm-hmm. from that place is at where did you meet these niggas at? I met them at the uh, the Airbnb I was staying at, which was crazy. Was it a party going on or something? No, it wasn't a party going on. It yeah. was a. Uh, it was we were just I was just there at the Airbnb. I went in the back to smoke some tree, mm. and then I just seen two niggas back there, mm. and they was just like start talking to me like, "Yo, you smoke weed?" I'm like, "Yeah." They like, "All right, I got some weed if you want to get something to roll up in." Mm. And it went from there to like. Yo, these niggas cool as shit. Yeah, yeah. And then we just started chopping it up or whatever, and they were just asking me, like, what I do or what I'm out here for uh, and shit like that. And that's when they told me about you. I was like, yo, you should check him out, yada, yada, yada. But I never would have thought that this would have happened. Yeah, yeah. But if I would have stayed downtown or in some white-ass city or some shit like that, no disrespect to the whiteies, but I wouldn't have <laughs> never met these dudes to make this shit happen. So yeah, we're, it all worked out. Talking about Ron Freed, if, if, if everyone's listening. Yeah, it that nigga out, is man. a is a weed head, for <laughs> real, for real. That shit worked out. Man. But yeah, you should definitely, uh, you should definitely go out there more. Cause yeah, I mean, I if spend, yo, I want to spend more time out there, bro. It's like, I, cause I, let me tell you, let me tell you something about uh the Bay Area, right? People in the Bay Area and people in like L.A. and shit, they all have the same dreams, right? Right. But the only difference is, the people in the Bay Area will work with you, will help you like, oh, you have the same dream. Let, let's, 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 let's see if we can accomplish this together. Let me see right. if I can help you. You help me. Oh, I know this person that can help you or user connects. Like it's all about helping each other. Right. right. Then down here is like, oh, we both have the same dream. No, I, let me, let me cut you off because I don't want you to accomplish the dream before I accomplish my yeah. dream or I'm not going to help you because it's, it's, it's that type of vibe or down here. Like- See up there, up there is totally different. So, you should definitely go up there more often to like establish yourself. Right. And I'm up there, so I can speak for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can promote your shit too. But uh, the Bay Area is where it's at because thrift, especially thrifting, thrifting, yeah. they have this big, huge uh, festival called Treasure Fest. I don't oh, know shit. if you know about that, yeah. but it's like it's on this island called treasure island Mm -hmm. like right before you get to san francisco and then they lock down the whole pier right and it's nothing but like people like yourself who have like brands like small brands and like there'll be bitches without there with with their jewelry line people who do like wood carving like anything you can think of right Right. it's called treasure fest and that's that's a spot where if you are a person like yourself you need to uh try to get into i gotta check that out yeah, you should definitely check it. I mean, it's not going on now because the COVID because shit, COVID, but, yeah. but once all this shit ends, you should definitely come up there with a shit ton of clothing. Right. And then, boom, pay for your little booth. Right. And your shit will sell. Tr- your, trust me, your shit will sell out. Oh, you're cool. You got it's, hurt. It you lasts, get your it lasts funky for, ass out of for here, a week. <laughs> Bro, motherfucker got moves to make. Yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely where it's at. But yeah, I think your brand is, uh, 
your brand is, is is nice. That's when them niggas told me about you. He's like, oh yeah, he's from Philly and all this other shit. I was like, okay, where? And then I looked you up. And then I was like, yeah, let me talk to this because I'm all about uh, I'm all about uplifting and talking to like niggas who are striving to become great. Right. You're already great, but yeah. The only thing is, everyone don't know about don't you. Know about it, right? Now, if everyone knows about you, they will see what I see and see what everyone else see. You know I, what I'm saying? I, I can't. I mean, when they late, when they when they get here, I'm handing out late passes. But you know, <laughs> all is all is welcome, man. All is welcome. Well, yeah, most definitely. Most like, definitely. I'm appreciative of like you even coming down and fucking with me. I'm mm-hmm. appreciative of like them and, like even talking about me even after I'm gone and 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 good words. You feel what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I appreciate all that, man. So mm-hmm. everybody else that's not on yet, like when y'all catch when y'all catch up, y'all gonna understand why people fuck with me. Mm-hmm. And I'm humble as fuck too. So yeah. I was like, I don't even really do too much talking. I just like to just create. You feel what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like I don't feel like I feel like what I do is is good shit. But I'm not walking around like yo, I, I'm the best or I got the best brand or this is the best brand ever. But I mean, once you see the work and feel the quality in hand, you are gonna understand like it's really good shit. Mm-hmm. And I came a long way. And like I'm not trying to take any shortcuts or. I'm not trying to be friends with someone just because they got connections yeah. on different shit that can get me different places. I'm actually like opening every door and it's like, yeah. if that one don't work out, then boom, all right, I'm going to this place. I'm going to open this door, like actually putting the work in to get where I'm trying to go. Because mm. I know there's no shortcuts mm. and I don't want no, just some, some hype fame. Like I really want to, I don't even want fame, but I just want to. I don't want the hype like, oh, this is the best shit ever. Like I want to work for that. Like I don't want yeah. nobody to just give me that. Where do you see your uh your your brand? Uh, where do where, where do you want to see your brand in like the next five years? The next five years, I want to see the brand, me being able to survive off the brand, like not having to do anything else. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So like to the point where it take off to where those like, all right, I know my rent is covered because I'm gonna sell this amount of hoodies, or I know my daughter tuition is paid for because mm. this, you feel what I'm saying? Like that's mm. where I want to, where I want to be within the next five years. It's not like most people would say like in a store or in a favorite store. Like, yeah, as long as I can continue to maintain and be able to keep creating what I like to do, mm. I'm good. Are you able, able to handle, let's say a nigga said, oh, I want, I want 50 of those sweatshirts. By myself. By, right by, and I want 50 of those sweatshirts in, in, by, in three weeks. Yeah, you, I can, I can do you're that. able to, uh, to handle that. that? Yeah. It was uh, crazy because when I first started, like, I was just like cutting up shorts and stuff like that, like making shorts out of jeans for, for women or mm-hmm. making like, like cut off at the knee for, for guys. Mm. And this, uh, it was these two, two black dudes. I'll never forget. They hit me up out of nowhere like call my phone I don't know how they got my phone number or nothing they were mm-hmm. like yo we came across you on instagram we want 140 pair pair of shorts and i'm like get the fuck out of Damn. here like i'm thinking this is my homie like bro stop playing on my phone though he like he like playing on your phone he like no i'm for real and i had to do 150 go get 150 pair of pants <laughs> and create shorts by myself like wow. nobody else helping me helping me do this so that's crazy i feel like i'm built to what would you do if someone says he, he wants a wholesale like a couple thousand or some shit what, no, what would you do i can't i can't i can't do that right now you'll just say no you'll just turn it down or? i mean no i wouldn't turn it down i would i would you'll I just would, say yeah and then try to try, try to handle to figure it? it out right but like real realistically no See, that's when you have to have niggas on standby who will come help you. So, do you have people like that? Uh, yeah, Linnea. She she helped me sew every fucking thing. Like we we did these bags. Like she, you're she, saying Linnea, nigga. Like I, I who, yeah, but the did people don't know. Oh, who house we at? Yeah. Okay. So who's Linnea to you? Linnea is that's my baby. Okay, yeah. she's like a uh, like your partner. Yeah. yeah she's also baby. a fashion designer. Yeah, she is. Okay. She's super dope, so she helps me. Uh, she helps me with a lot of shit. Mm. So for sure, it's like sewing, like see sewing machines over here. Does she have her own brand over there? Uh, she, yeah, she does have her own brand. That's her dress right there. Yeah, okay. What's the name of her shit? The classic cool. The classic cool. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, have you guys? Well, have you ever thought about like starting a like a? 
I don't know, like a collective thing. Uh, like we're a bunch of we're a bunch of black fashion designers all work together collectively or have and have their own shit under this umbrella of this collective. Yeah, but for, I feel like it's I feel like it's hard to find that. Like I mean, I'm sure it's it's like if we put the work in, it can be done. But mm. like off top, it's just like everybody wants to be looked at it like they're their boss independently. Yeah, you know what I'm saying versus everybody under one umbrella, but we all gaining knowledge together and learning together to where mm. we can branch off. But it's nothing wrong with coming from under that umbrella. You feel mm. what I'm saying? So it was like right right now. I mean, I think it can happen. But just like realistically, right now, like everybody mm. want to be known for doing their own shit or yeah. standing out as a boss or whatever the case may be. For for me, it's like this: is what we got to do. We all learn together. We all share ideas and share information with each other. Like, how can we grow? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And even if one person do come from an, come from under the umbrella before the next person we always got that connection with that person or they can all always reach back and you feel what I'm saying? Give yeah. them the knowledge that they learned from what, from a bigger spot or a better spot. I mean, yeah, I see it. That, that would be dope if you would be able to pull that off. Cause that would be, uh, that would be, that's what I'm doing with what I'm, what I'm trying to do with everyday celebrity media company. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a collective. So like, so like I have, uh, I have graphic designers under my team. I have, uh, uh like printers mm -hmm. who like, do all my like t-shirts and that that, bag, that right? pouch that i gave you i have fucking uh a photographer ron freed the nigga that told you about me he's a he's a photographer under uh every day but everyone does their own thing but they're still under right the the umbrella of everyday celebrity media company so when people reach out to me like oh do you have a photographer boom okay. ron or oh, do you have someone who could print t-shirts boom kari and she has her own business, but she's still under. That's that's crazy. Well, do you have Do you have someone who can uh like make a flyer for me? Boom, my nigga George. So that's it's that type of shit. That's crazy because it's like that's yeah. I tried to see. So yeah, I, I, I see. I see. I see that to, in you, nigga. You need to, to get. A I good, tried to build something like that though, bro. So it's like for me, it's like I I I know exactly what you're talking about, but yeah, I can. I, I mean, you already, you already got, you already got fifty percent of it yeah. already. Yeah, I want that. You and happen. your check. I want that to happen, like for real, for real. So other designers can learn to do whatever it is they want to do. Because mm. it's like for real, for real. You, if you just trying to come up for me, if you just trying to come around, just to soak up some knowledge and skate, mm. I got, I got to charge you for that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But mm. if you really want to put some work in. And we can put some work in together. Then it's like, come on, my nigga, like let's build. Mm. You can still do your own thing. I don't want a piece of what you're doing, but at least let's build for real, for real. Yeah, not just come soak up some game, get the get the shit that you need, and then be like, all right, I'm out. Like mm. it don't work like that. Mm. I gotta, you got to pay for that one. Mm. Yeah, okay. So you you want your brand within five years to be I for, I forgot what the fuck you said uh in five years I I just wanted to be like oh so you want to live off of it yeah, yeah I okay yeah. To be income I want to okay. be able to just be like I ain't got to do nothing else as far as me like every day like I said I go thrifting every day I don't have to do I don't have to thrift every day unless I unless that's what I want to do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying so is that if that's your goal how do you think you can accomplish that within the next five years the next five years is keep going in the same direction that i'm going now like keep pushing keep keep working not not give up on not give up on the mission not even think of the, think about giving up on the mission mm. and uh because i feel like like i said i've been doing it since 2012 and I feel like it took all these years for me to finally be happy with what I'm doing. Yeah. So for me, it's like I'm headed in the right direction already. Now I just got to show the world like what I'm actually doing and be able to connect with more people mm. so they can see like, damn, this shit is really dope. And he put the work in. You feel what I'm saying? Like I ain't come out the gates and my shit was hot or I ain't come out the gates and I had the best quality. Yeah. So like if you rocking with me, you see the growth. You feel what I'm saying? Like if you follow me, you see the growth. And mm -hmm. that's the shit that I like. I like the to be like, I want to be that person that be like, yo, this nigga came from his shit was trash to like, now I want to buy a piece. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? It don't, it don't matter if it's 10, 12 years later, as long as I get there, it is what it is for me. 
Mm. Has there ever been a time where you felt like giving up? Yeah, hell yeah. Because it's like, for real, for real, like, it'd be for me, is like a lot of this shit that I'm, like, a lot of the stuff that I'm creating, this money come out of my pocket. You feel what mm. I'm saying? Like, I don't got nobody, like, investing or anything like that. So for me, it's like, like, nigga, this is like me sacrificing a couple months' rent. Mm-hmm. Like, I got to make this money back. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. that's the struggle for me. But I wouldn't give it up for nothing. Like, all the shit that I'm doing and the direction I'm headed in, like, I'm I'm enjoying it. It's mm-hmm. fun for me. Well, it's definitely, it's definitely uplifting to hear niggas who have dreams and shit and who gave up everything. Because I definitely respect the nigga who drops everything. And leaves a comfortable situation Real comfortable. and goes into like the unknown, but he knows that's what he, and a lot of people don't have the strength, you know what yeah. I'm saying, to do that. It's crazy. Cause or the my bravery. Family, my family looked at me like I was crazy. Mm. Like, like you leaving, you leaving your job. You, like, you feel what I'm saying? But like, I, I feel like I get it from my grandpa. Yeah. Who's like originally from South Carolina. Uh, and then he left South Carolina, like, and I went to visit down there, bro. It was like dirt roads. Everybody's still living in trailers. Yeah. It was fucked up. So for him to leave that and come up north to Philadelphia, and once he came up here, mm. all my grandma's sisters came up here. Mm. All his family came up there. You feel what I'm saying? It's a way better living in Philly than it is living down there. Mm. So for me, that was that was my whole thing. It's like my family's still in Philly. They don't travel. They ain't going nowhere. Mm. Like, why not be that bright spot or why not be that spot where now y'all got somewhere to come? You yep. know what I'm saying? So I was like, I came out here, then my mom come to visit and she like, oh, I love it out here. You know mm. what I'm saying? Then I get my dad out the city. If not, then they just still back home yep. chilling. Like, this is, this is everything. I know niggas in Philly who never even been outside of Philly. Yeah. I know niggas in, in, Oakland, who never even been outside of Oakland, yeah. Yeah. which is a shame. I think every, I think every nigga, especially niggas that grew up in the hood, to travel, and more importantly, travel outside of the U.S. Yeah. Because when you go outside of the U.S., mm-hmm. you see how appreciated black people are. Right. Because niggas everywhere love niggas. Yeah. Because what's crazy? Is I was one of those dudes, bro. That. Didn't want to lead a hood. Oh, you crazy, nigga. Bro, I, like, exactly. Now that <laughs> I, I sit, always wanted to lead a hood. Now that I sit back and I think about that shit, like, my homie was, like, balling down in Atlanta. He was going to Clark. Mm. Like, one of the star niggas on the team. Mm. Like, bro, come down. Like, I got bitches everywhere. I got, like, you feel me? And those are the days where, like, that shit would have been like, oh, for real, here I come. I'd be like, nah, bro. Oh, yeah, they would have loved you. You, you a I'm city in, nigga, too? I'm in the hood, bro. Like, you feel me? I see you when you come <laughs> home for spring break. And he be now, like, he be grinding me the fuck up. He be like, Oh, now you want to travel, nigga. But mm. when I was telling you to come to Atlanta, it was like, bro, like, I wish I would have been doing that shit back then. Oh, yeah. Especially Clark. Mm-hmm. Clark. Ain't he the man. You feel me? Like, I try to go to Clark, too. I was, like, now that I think back about that shit, I kicked myself in the ass. Like, nigga, you should have been fucking traveling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I traveling is, done, traveling is, 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 is very important, I think, for everybody, especially, but especially for black people. Correct. It's definitely it. Yeah, bro, change your it'll change your mindset. It'll give you a different outlook on life, and it'll make you you feel me want more than just going back home or home. Because for me, home is always gonna be home. Mm. You feel me? That's gonna I'm gonna always have family there. Mm. That's gonna always be a spot I can go. Yeah, but for me, it's just like I want to see more. I want to see different shit. Mm. I want to meet different people. Like I don't want to just be stuck with the same shit for the rest of my life what's the one thing you miss uh about philly my daughter you know yeah, close to my daughter yeah that's that's like the the biggest thing i miss her and my grandma mm. but other than that like i still talk to the family members that i need to talk to on a daily basis or every other day so when you first ate a philly cheesesteak in california uh, Did you feel it was disrespectful? No, I didn't. I went to this one spot, <laughs> and the dude is actually from uh, was well, folks. His parents are from Philly, uh-huh. and they make uh, cheesesteaks that are really good. So it kind of felt like I was home for real, for real. What spot was this? It's called Booze Booze uh, Philly Cheesesteaks. This is in LA. Yeah, it's one in Silver Lake, uh, okay. and it's one in like Koreatown. Like 
Like, fucked me up, bro. Like, I really thought it was going to be, like, some disrespectful shit that they put, like... But you said the dude was from Philly? Yeah. He's, oh, like, an Asian know. dude, and his folks is from Philly. So, they had, like, a cheesesteak cheese steak spot in Philly, mm. and then they came out here. What's the one thing about L.A. that you, like, oh, uh, this will never be Philly? I mean, the one thing that you like more in L.A., that you find in L.A. that's not in Philly, that you find like? in L.A. that... I don't have to drive an hour to the beach. Mm. I can just go any direction and it's it's a beach. I mean, right nigga, there. well, it's traffic. You go be in an hour. Yeah, huh? You go be an hour. All this traffic yeah. out here. That in uh in Philly is like like I said, bro. It's so cold. It's cold as shit in Philly. Like the mm. weather, the weather is fucked up for me. Mm. So for here, like I get spoiled with the weather. Mm. But okay. in Philly, like that's that's always home. I love I love my city, but. I got to be that. I want all my homies to be able to like, all right, fuck that. We getting out the city. We can go travel to see see Dom. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, let's 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 enjoy some other shit than mm-hmm. the same shit we've been doing forever. Are you into spirituality? No, nah, not really. Are you religious? No. So you I mean, atheist. I believe, I believe in God, but like, I believe in God. I believe in. You don't gotta. You don't gotta lie to me. No, I'm not. I'm not. I ain't okay, because no. I don't I believe just, in God. I just so. don't go to. Church. <laughs> I just. I want you to feel comfortable like saying. It, it. Like my thing, I feel like it's somebody out here, like mm. like making all this shit happen, creating all this shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But like, do I believe in church? Like, do I go to church? No, I don't go to church. Like, mm. there's nothing against folks that do, but it, for me, it's just not for me. Mm. Like, I try to go to church. I I didn't try. My homie didn't drag me to the kingdom hall when I was younger. Like, mm. and none of it was for me. Okay. So you're not Muslim? No, I'm not Muslim. But I come from a Muslim ass city though. Mm. Are your parents your dad Muslim? My dad, yeah. My mom no. Your your mom's not? No. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So you believe in God but not I mean I Allah. Be, I feel like they both the same. Like I feel like I feel like it's just a an Arabic way of saying God. Like mm. I mean I like it's something that's making all this shit happen in the world. Somebody mm. that's can you feel me? Mm. Other than the the governor and all this other stuff, I mean mm. the government and all that other shit that's create like got their hand on it. But somebody creating this shit. What, what do you What do you feel about COVID? I feel like COVID is bullshit. Are you getting the vaccine? No, no, no. I feel like COVID is like just like something to keep us in control. Wait, 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 wait. You're not getting the vaccine. Um, is that because you don't trust the government or is, cause you know, niggas, a lot of niggas say they ain't getting the vaccine I mean, because like, of, I, I, I never even got, I never got the flu shot. Mm. Like, I just, I'm just not a believer in like, you just sticking some shit up in me. Yeah. And for for me, I mean, I'm not getting it either. So you don't have to feel left out. And for me saying. with, for me with COVID is like, bro, y'all come up with a vaccine too fucking quick. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying? Like we didn't have all types of fucking HIV, cancer, yeah, diabetes, all this shit that's 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 been going on for years that y'all make so much money off of because people got to get medicine and different shit like that. But out of nowhere, y'all got to fucking care for COVID and this shit only been out a year. And in the news, a nigga just a nigga who took both vaccines got tested positive for COVID. It makes no sense. <laughs> So you so, tell yeah. me I gotta take all the. I I feel like if I take a COVID shot, I ain't gotta wear a mask. You feel me? I could just be able to go. Yeah, exactly. With a motherfucking spot full of people, and I ain't gotta wear shit. But it don't I'm make sense. I'm not fucking with none of that shit, man. Yeah, it don't make sense for me. I feel like something something more is going on than they really telling us, mm. or they just working on the plan to to do some more bullshit. Are you into like conspiracy theories? Nah. No? I try not to be. I see a lot of that shit on the internet, but I try not to. I try not to feed into it. How do you feel about Trump? I'm just gonna ask you like random shit. Now. How do I feel about Trump? <laughs> How do you feel about Trump getting acquitted on yeah. his uh, impeachment trial? Do you follow politics? No, not really. I try not to, bro. I try not to. Trump and I feel like I feel like Trump just what he did was all the people that we that that you didn't know was racist. They came. They. Came, all the people that you didn't know were racist, they came out and really showed their true colors. So, like, you kind of got to thank that nigga for that shit. But do you think Trump is actually racist? Or was he just playing, playing them niggas for a fool? I think he was playing them niggas for a fool. 
For real, for real. Like, I feel like he knew that he can control them by his words. You feel me? Like, they, like, just think about, like, all the trailer park motherfuckers around the world that's, that was looking for a racist guy. You feel what I'm saying? To be able to, to get their word out and actually be seen and shit like that. So I feel like once he came out and he started all his bullshit, he knew what to do to get them, uh, the, the racist white folk vote. Yeah. Yeah, I honestly don't think, uh, well, honestly, I think all white people are racist. All of them. Every single one of them. But I, I mean, just, I, I was called a nigger before as a, as a young boy, like by my football, by my teammate in football. So that, yeah, I mean, yeah. You get a white boy mad enough, he goes, he go call you a nigger. That was the first thing he called me. That was if you get a white boy mad as fuck, where the nigga's like crying, to where he's so angry, he, the, tears are coming off his eyes. He's gonna call you a nigga. That was the first thing he called me too. And fuck. Yeah, and once I he cracked. calls you that, it's on and popping. Yeah, I had the cracking though. Yeah, same situation <laughs> happened to me when I was uh, when I was young. I was hanging with. I was at my friend's house. He was white, spending the night at his house, and then his little brother kept following us, and we kept trying to leave and shit, like ditch him and shit. And then he got mad for some reason. I forgot what he got mad for, but the nigga was so angry tears were coming out of his eyes then he called me a nigga and then i just did one of them street fighter two uppercuts right and laid his ass out he was young though he was he was like i feel bad because he was younger but getting knocked out if you call someone a nigga that has no age limit you know what i'm saying At all. but yeah At all. they use our words though they and the crazy thing about it though when you go to concerts that's all you hear Come oh yeah the concert or oh white yeah folks all this, yeah, exactly. Cause niggas ain't buying no music. Niggas ain't all these ain't rappers. No concerts. Niggas ain't going to no concerts. Niggas ain't going. I went to the Kanye West. This is back in the day when he did that. Uh, when he came out with the fucking what's that album where um we had the Panda song, Life of Pablo. I went yeah. to the Life of Pablo tour in Oakland. Nothing but white people. Mm-hmm. Nothing but white people. Travis Scott. Nothing but white people. Yeah, cause those are niggas who. Those are the niggas who buy all their shit, buy their their clothes, clothes buy their CDs, buy their concert tickets. Niggas will listen to it, but they'll yeah. listen to it on some like uh, that's the crazy a radio thing. or something. That's the crazy thing about it, man. Like we just let the motherfuckers take over all our shit. Like it's not like I got exactly. like I, I'm, I with have, no ownership. But the thing is, these niggas don't have ownership with none of that. Right. They say they do, but they don't. Like if you, but the thing about it, like, and the only person that that confuses is our our culture. Like you yeah, know exactly the kids that the kids that's in our community that do look up to the, the rappers or the entertainers and shit like that. Like majority of the ones who really are their fans, like the white folks, like you said, are buying tickets and shit like that. They know what's going on. You feel me? They know that these dudes are not as rich as they say they are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all up front. It's just like uh, like oh, I I I have a house. But the bank owns the house. Right. I don't really own. This is not my house. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I have a car, but the bank owns this car. I don't own. It. I'm paying payments on it, even though it's my car. I don't own this car. If I miss a payment, they come in to get this. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like Dame. That's why I look up to Dame Dash so so for much. Dame Dash is like because I'm like a. I'm not trying to. I'm even though I have a media company, I'm not trying to be in front of the camera. You know what I mean? I'm a behind the scenes type of nigga. And I fucking love Dame Dash because all he does is talk about ownership, this, ownership, that. Because if you, I remember I was listening to an interview and he was, uh, I think it was the one when, when he was on The Breakfast Club. He was right. arguing with DJ Envy. He was like, nigga, you, if you don't come, you go get, he was talking to DJ Envy. He was like, nigga, you an employee, you an employee. I'm a boss and all this other shit, right? And the way he, people were taking that out of context, but what he was saying is true. He was like, nigga, if you don't show up to Hot 97, nigga, they can fire you, nigga. Mm-hmm. Dame Dash was like, nigga, I don't got to wake up to, and do nothing and because I'm, I'm a boss. No one is above me. I put my money into everything. So if you have a business, they say you have a business, and then you get a fucking loan for the business. Right. That's is really not your business, nigga, because that loan Company. is coming from the white white the white bank that's giving you money so they own it so if you have to take money from someone else you don't really own your shit you know what i'm saying but if you start from the ground Mm -hmm. put your own money in your own shit then 
you are the owner. Like everyday celebrity media company is a hundred percent owned by black people because I don't take money from no one. That's, that's all the money that goes into this is me. And I'm pretty sure all the money that goes into sick days is from you. So you are a hundred percent owner yeah. of your shit. Now it's good to take it's good to take money if niggas want to give you money, right. but as far as like contracts and like all that yeah. shit, you know what I mean? I like if I was to give you five hundred dollars just oh here's five hundred dollars. Here. It's yours. Put it towards whatever the fuck you want. Mm. That's different from like you going, going to, to a the bank. bank and taking out a loan. Exactly. That shit back. I feel like with Dame Dash though, it's just like people don't like his delivery. But yeah, I love that shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I love that. Like, I love that New York. Fuck you. you know I mean, like you that's how he is. Like, you gotta be like that sometimes to get your to get your word across because that's how East Coast niggas are. Though. Motherfuckers will play with you. You feel what I'm saying? Like motherfuckers will play you to the point where they're like, nah, nigga. Like, let me get my point across, mm. whether you like it or not. But at least as, as long as I get my shit across, like I'm I'm good. Mm. But yeah, Dame is definitely like a a big inspiration for me. For mm. just like not working for nobody. Doing your own shit, reinvesting your money into your projects, yep. and not fucking taking shit from nobody for real, for real. Mm-hmm. Cause they'll fuck you over out here. So you said, uh, as far as fashion, who are some designers that you uh, you look up to? That I look up to. You said your favorite uh, brand is Stussy. Yeah, Stussy. But who are like some of the? I don't really know about Stussy. Bro, I don't be knowing none of these niggas' names, bro. No, <laughs> I'll be real with you, bro. I don't be knowing none of these niggas' names, bro. Is there? Know. Well, let's, let me ask you a different question. Give me a celebrity that you look at and be like, "Yo, I like the way this nigga dresses." A celebrity, man, them niggas be having stylists, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean that is true. Them niggas be having stylists, bro. I don't, I don't know. Honestly, I don't be checking on none of these niggas, no. bro. I don't be checking on none of these niggas. And nigga, you in the fashion world, nigga. But I really just be in my own world, though. You feel what I'm saying? Like, mm. for me, it's like, I don't be knowing none of the names of these niggas that that uh, that be, like, running the brands or anything. Like, it's just some shit. Like, if I like it, then I fuck with it. But I don't really do the research to be like, oh, this is the dude who owns this and who runs this. You feel mm. what I'm saying? Like, I re- more so than, like, smaller brands that are like, niggas that's grinding like me, like, mm. And I I will get to know that person, like get to know that person, or get to know about that brand because it's like, all right, nigga, we coming from the same shit. But the dudes that's already at the top and already there, I don't really, I try not to pay too much attention to it because mm. I ain't buying none of that shit, bro. Like <laughs> I ain't buying that shit. Uh, be real with you, I'd rather support the niggas that's on the grind and on the come up like me. Mm. Do you have any uh niggas in mind that are on the grind that gonna come up? Do you know about? Yeah, like I fuck with uh, it's a couple. I fuck with Rivers as well. Mm. I fuck with uh, Phenomenal. They're both out of like Philly, the East Coast. Mm. I fuck with uh, out here. I fuck with Little Africa. I fuck with uh, Green by Mark Green. Mm. Like those are dudes that's like grinding like me, bro. That I can reach out and they not on no cocky shit. I can talk to them. You feel what I'm saying? Like you ever yeah. heard? Of, you ever heard of uh, Run the World Clothing? No, yeah. you just picked me on. Yeah, run. They uh, yeah, you should look them up. They uh, they base in Atlanta, mm-hmm. but they started in um, I believe they started in Oakland. Okay, and they like some niggas, young young black dudes like yourself. Uh, so yeah, they're based in Atlanta. And they uh, they have a nice ass brand called Run the World Clover. Gotcha. Yeah, you should check them out too. Yeah, those are those are the dudes that I that I fuck with. The ones that it's like on the ground like me mm. i mean i can i pull up to their pop-ups i support their shit they support my shit and it's just like even supporting ain't even got to be with uh with money you feel me like a repost or a yeah. share or shit like that like mm. it's always genuine love is never mm. no weird shit or i'm above you or i'm yep. this far type shit yeah a lot of people don't uh a lot of people don't realize that like showing love is as easy as fucking like reposting it's too easy, a, or a shirt, you know what I'm it's saying? It's too easy. You feel what I'm saying, bro? Like, it's too easy. It's Way too easy, easy but niggas, to do that shit. It's, it's more but easy. niggas, even if it's that, even though it's that easy, niggas will still not do it. Which is crazy. Which is crazy, like, crazy. If you got some shit that I think is dope, I want, my, I want people that I know to see that shit. Like the way you posted that bag that I gave you? Mm-hmm. 
It's that easy. Yeah, it's just simple. to show love, just that, I mean, like because that. Because it's like, bro, you you come you come in all the way here to show me love. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's like, why not introduce people that I know to your platform? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's like, why not keep this shit rolling? And we all we all black. Yeah, we all on the grind. There's, we all got there's goals that we trying to reach. You so much goal. money out here for it's everyone to eat. So for the everyone crazy to thing eat. about it is that it's a lot of people that feel like. It's only this amount of dollars, and I got to get all of them. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, it's like every dollar that you're trying to get ain't a good dollar. So why not put somebody else in a position to where though they can get that dollar, that help them, and then they get ahead and they, you feel me? There's they go, they go come back to you and help you. It's always Ali Oops being thrown, bro. You feel what I'm saying? So like the more I feel like we get to understand that aspect of life and it's mm-hmm. like, Bro was like, yo, you don't gotta get every dollar. You feel what I'm saying? Like mm. you you might have made a hundred thousand this this month. Why not help this dude make twenty five? Because yeah. he ain't make shit. You feel me? And it's yeah. like he make that twenty five, bro, he taking care of his fucking family. Mm. He take like, you never know what that person got to take care of. But if you've been greedy and you just taking all of it, it's like Mm. When that nigga do finally get on and you hit that bump in the road, now you're going to be wishing, you feel me? You helped him like, oh, bro, you was, you was, you was my young. Nah, nigga, remember you was getting every dollar. <laughs> you ain't even want to throw me a fucking bone. So. Exactly, yeah. So what's the what's the, what's the the plan for your next collection? The, or are you not even thinking about that? Uh, I am thinking about it, but I haven't put anything in motion. But my next collection, I just want that shit to be better than what I just dropped. So when you when you do the collections, are do you base it on oh, this collection is coming out in summertime, so I need to do summer clothes. No, that's you know, why, you that's just you just do that. I'm just like an independent, like small dude, like I am. Like I can may say next collection might not be. Too we need winter. some beanies, nigga. Yeah, I need sure. I need a sick day beanies. You know what's nigga. crazy? I did some beanies like last year and they sold out. I bro, but with COVID kind of fucked me up. It was like, do people got money to spend? Do people not got money? To spend? <laughs> yeah, niggas got money. Yeah. What? Yeah, but the thing that's... Nigga, super- yo, let me tell you something, my nigga. Niggas got money to spend. <laughs> niggas is out here... Everybody niggas is out here still doing, fresh. doing scandals on VA... On, on loans and shit, on PPP loans. Niggas got money to yeah, spend. Yeah, see, niggas is fresh in the pandemic, so it's like... That's why I was like, let me, let me put something out. The fucking... There was a story, right? Mm-hmm. About Atlanta. About the strip clubs. Yeah. And fucking... They were the strippers. I was I was listening to this podcast. Shout out to Million Dollars Worth of Game. Oh, that's from Philly. Yeah. And uh they were talking about uh they, they were interviewing these strippers, right? At um that work at Magic City. And they were like, Yo, during the COVID shit, cause Gilly asked them, like, did COVID like slow down like right. niggas going to the strip clubs? And the strippers was like, Fuck no, nigga niggas was in there throwing thousands and thousands of dollars during it because everyone dope boys they, they was doing that hustle shit they was getting loans and right, shit pvp right, loans and all right. that shit so it was like a fucking it was like a smokers board of like trap niggas with a shit ton of money so it was like we don't got just to trying to floss exactly but these niggas are stupid because they're getting all these loans and they have to pay it back. And then they, a lot of these niggas are getting arrested because they got these fake ass businesses and shit. That's so. the thing. That's, that's, that's the, that's the bad part. Cause they come exactly. in, they coming to get us. <laughs> oh yeah. Most definitely. They but definitely coming to get they us. They coming to get us. Oh, you got how many thousand? Nah, we coming to get that. Yeah. Yeah. Just, but yeah, COVID should definitely. Yeah, should I not see, slow I you see down. see everybody's still fresh, bro. So for me, it's just like, as far as like creating cr- collections, uh, I'm hope I'm hoping to get something out by summer. Mm. Like if I don't, it's no biggie. As long as I can get like a couple pieces out mm. or some shit that I'm working on, I don't have to be a full collection, but just some shit to still keep everything going, keep everything moving. Mm-hmm. I'll do that. But I really want to do like a pop up, bro. Like I want to do a pop up in LA or. Somewhere just on the West Coast where I don't know anybody yet and just build a whole new family. My nigga, I'm telling you, come to the Bay Area. I am, bro. I will help you. Nigga. I want to spend more time up there, bro. Like, honestly, I want to spend nigga. more time up there. It's super chill. It's late. Like, for me, it's like. All you got to do is hit me up. It's like home. It's like home, bro, for me. Well, you now you got a nigga in the Bay Area. So right. you you welcome to. I can host you and all that shit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I'm with that. So, it's all right, good. So look. Listen, this is the deal. Once this COVID shit gets to like 
I guess where the where the world calls it under control or mm-hmm. safe. I want to do a pop up in Oakland because I don't know nobody there, bro. I want to build relationships with. We can do that. We can do that over the world. That's like a that's like something big for me. We be telling my daughter all the time, but like, yo, your dad really the shit worldwide. But if you do that, you just gotta have enough material. I'm I'm with that. You know what I'm saying? You can't go up there with like, oh, I got four shirts. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I ain't coming like that. Yeah. I ain't coming like that. I'm really coming to, so everybody that comes can get something if that's what they want to do. We can, we can fucking, we can rent a, we can rent a loft or something like a little pure space mm-hmm. joint, promote your shit. I'm with that. We can, we can, I know a bunch of artists, niggas can perform at your shit. I'm with that. Have your boot. You know, this shit can be planned. That's all I'm saying. I'm with that. So we can plan, but you, uh, yeah, I would definitely, because I mean, I have no problem supporting shit that I believe in. You know what I mean? So yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate you believing in me, and I just want to tell my niggas back home, like, you see what happened when you get out and meet people. You feel me? Because back home, <laughs> no nah, real shit. Back home is like talking to like outsiders or or just like talking to other people that's just not in your clique. Mm. It's like, oh my nigga, you dicky, and you feel me, like. But it's like, nah, bro, like. No, it's you networking, never, You never know where this conversation gonna go. You feel what I'm saying? It's like you never know where this conversation gonna go. This yes. conversation could turn into a million dollar conversation. You exactly. Feel what I'm and meanwhile, you think I'm dicky, and or you think I'm on some on some bullshit. Whole time I'm connecting and, and opening the door that can possibly bring you along. But since mm-hmm. that's your mindset, I gotta leave you behind. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's yeah. like, like, bro, you never know where these conversations gonna go, man. Exactly. And then you, you in the business. This is a business of networking. You know what I mean? Correct. Whether you in the fashion game, the fucking music gang, it's all about networking. You know what Correct. I mean? It's about who you know, bro. It's like when you go to college. Like for like most majority of my like people I know that went to college, they come back home and now they work in like jobs that wasn't wasn't what their major was. But like not knowing that college is about networking, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like meeting the right people, joining the right fraternities if that's what you're gonna do. Yeah, always connecting to be able to get pulled in by somebody once you get out of school. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I look at that as the whole as like the game of life. Mm-hmm. Like majority of the jobs or shit that I got is because of people that I conversated with or I met. Like when my roommates moved out, I was able to move right into a spot because I networked with this person for years. Mm. And I always kept my word with this person. I always been cool with this person. And he was like, yo, you know what? They moved out on you. Boom. I got a spot for you for this amount. You get what I'm saying? It's Mm. way cheaper than what I was paying when I was all the way out there. So that shit worked out for me. But if I never networked or built this relationship with this person, I would have been back home in Philly mm. or I've been sleeping in my car. So I figured it out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it was just like, man, network with as many motherfuckers as you can shake as many hands as you can. You feel me? Not saying go out your way to do it, but cause for me, I'm a natural to myself person, mm. but I feel like if I open up and have a conversation with someone, and that mean like their energy got to be on another level to where it's all my art. I fuck with this person. Let mm. me, let me open up and conversate with this person. And you never know where that shit going to go. Yeah. Like I met a dude my first week here. Just went to like an art show. Dude from Philly had an art show. Dude just had like a cool fit on my like, bro. Cool fit. He turned around like, damn, thank you, man. Same to you. You want mm. a bear? Gave me a bear. We start talking. Next day, he hit me up on Instagram. Like, yo, what's the sick days? What's sick days about? Nah. I told him what it was about. He copped the hoodie. And then I realized, like, damn, this dude is a dope photographer. He's a dope videographer. He gets me a job working for, like, when everything, like, people start moving out, going back home. I'm like, I'm panicking. You feel me? I'm like, what the fuck I'm going to do? So I hit him up, like, bro, I need a job. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Boom. He hooked me up with a job. All right, now I'm cool now. Now he shot my lookbook recently, do all my edits for like my photos and shit. And I met this dude my first week here. Oh, off the of strength? A, off an outfit. No, no. I, I mean, at first he was, mm. but he's so talented. To, I'm like, bro, I can't, I can't let you do this yeah, shit yeah. for free. Cause for me, it's just like, I know the work that you put in and I know like how much effort you put in to your work to be good. Mm. So like, I gotta pay you. You feel what I'm saying? Like I'm mm. paying everybody else that's doing shit for me. Like, how can I not pay you? 
Mm. But at first, he was doing it off the strength, bro, like just out of love. But it's to the point now where I'm like, bro, you deserve money. Like, I got to pay you for this. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. And I met him just like, bro, your outfit's just, your outfit cool. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? And that's three years later, and we still tight like this. And we, I hit him up like, bro, I need this shoe. I do photography myself, but I like to be hands on and working and shit like that versus me taking the photos. I can do it myself, but yeah. come on, bro, I pay you for it. I mean, I got a photographer that, that will do your shit for free. My cousin Cameron. All that right. nigga will do your shit for free. He's in Oakland? No, he's out here. Okay. Well, you got to link me up with him. Yeah. That's not the day that I brought I, yo, Trust me. The nigga will do it for free. He's not a professional. Right. But, I mean, the but pictures bro. that he takes, if you like them, right. they're yours for free, nigga. Right. <laughs> bro, I pay him, though. That's the thing. Like, you don't, now, I'm telling you. You don't got to pay this no, nigga. I get it, but He's free. Lunch or something. I, bro, you can buy them lunch. Listen, but I'm telling I, you, when I say free, that means it's free. Nigga. Like, I did photography, bro, and I I know, like, I used to come from the Valley, which is, like, fucking in traffic to L.A. is, like, an hour and some change, mm. if traffic heavy, to shoot for chicks for free. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, I know. He's one of these niggas who had, who's into photography, who got this fancy camera, who's just trying to get his name out. That's me. And I that, told him, that was nigga, me. if I bring you people, you're going to do it for free. And he was like, yeah, I'll do it for free. That was me. So. That was me. This is that nigga. So, Twenty one hundred dollars on the camera. If you need pictures taken when you don't have the money to pay someone, right? All right. Well, this, this is link, the nigga this, that you call. This link we would Word up. link us together. All right. Well, so I want you to tell the people where they can find you on social media. On where, social. where, where they can find your clothing if they want to purchase. Mm-hmm. If you want to give a shout out to anyone or if you want to promote anything, this is the, time. the prom- this is the time. Okay. The floor is yours. Social media, I only have Instagram. So it's at Sick Days or at Dominic. Yeah, you got to sp- spell the shit, nigga. Spell the shit. D-O-M-I-N-I-C. No, 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 no. Spell your... Oh, Sick Days? Yeah. The, oh, S-Y-C-K-D-A-Y-Z. That's Instagram, just straight. S-Y-C-K-D-A-Y-Z. My personal shit is Dominic, D-O-M-I-N-I-C, underscore S-D-12. And far as shout-outs, I just want to give a shout-out to my brother. I know all this is happening because of you, Rest bro. in peace, Watching rest in peace. Me. I love you forever. My daughter, Aubrey, I love you forever. All my homies that believe in me and that support me, bro, money don't even mean support. If you repost, if you share it, like, I appreciate y'all. And uh, I appreciate you, bro. Like, cheers to you, bro, for for even coming to Word. fuck with me and take out the time to come fuck with me, bro. I really All appreciate good. it. I'll never forget this. And the <laughs> thing about it, bro, I told myself, like, like I'm usually, like, a, a quiet boy, bro, like, I don't really do too much talking. I'm yeah, me too. Myself. I'm so saying. for I told myself like 2021 is like I'm gonna start opening up. I'm gonna start you know talking more and letting people know like what I come from, mm. what I've been through. So like this is my second podcast that I did this year. Mm. And for me, like this is I'm pretty sure this was the more per. Yeah, this is way more yeah, personal. And it's it's a lot longer. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But for me, it was like I don't really like talking about shit. But it's like, bro, like. Like, I had to tell myself in the mirror earlier, like, I think I'm nervous as shit because just me talking or just, you feel me? But, I mean, this felt like just like a regular conversation, right. you know what just I mean? knowing that people was going to watch this. And I had to look in the mirror earlier and tell myself, like, bro, like, he came here for a reason. Like, he mm. wouldn't have came here if he didn't see something in you. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So, it was just like, bro, like, stop being nervous and shit about everything and realize, like, this is the shit that come with yeah, what yeah. you're doing. Right. So I'm 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 thankful for it, man. Shout out to all my homies that like really like support me, bro. Like I appreciate y'all. I appreciate you. Mm. I appreciate the niggas from the bay that threw this oop and <laughs> like we gonna really take this shit far. For real, for real. Yeah. Like, we gonna take this far, bro. I'm gonna come to Oakland and do some shit too. Yeah, most definitely. All right, well everyone, everyone, please, 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 all my listeners, all my niggas in overseas, you know what I mean? Niggas in London. Dubai, Paris. If you're listening to this, please go to Instagram. Sick days. Oh, yeah, you can hold not to cut you off, bro. Yeah, you can go, go to www.sickdays.com. S Y C K D A Y Z.com. Please go to that and purchase, purchase, 
purchase, purchase his clothing. Purchase a hat, a shirt, nigga, a sure, sweater. Anything. I'm about to purchase a, uh, I'm about to buy a hat right now after we get done with this. Hopefully, I might buy some chef pants if he has any. Do you have any? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, this nigga about to make some money right now. That's love. So, please purchase on his, inst- go to his, uh, his website, follow him on Instagram. He's 100% black owned. All you niggas out there who preach all this black owned shit, buy black, buy black. This is your chance to actually buy black because this nigga's 100% black owned. Up and coming. Shout out to. Shout out to Jersey, Glassboro, Jersey, Glassboro High School. Shout out to North Philly. Shout out to uh, Germantown. For sure, for sure. Uh, shout out to the whole East Coast, PA. Shout out to Oakland. RIP to his brother. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, please, yeah, just please, please support. And then thank you, Dominic, for gracing, gracing me, Everyday Celebrity Podcast episode 17 i thank y'all for having me bro thank y'all for fitting me in this is just the beginning you feel oh, me? Uh, i feel like just having this conversation with you bro is like you feel me it's deeper it's deeper than that now so i appreciate you <laughs> like i really do and bro. stay tuned for the pop-up we go we go plan some we go plan some when, Oakland, once though. once all this so everybody in philly get your ass on a fucking plane and yeah he's he, this nigga about to migrate he's about to migrate from from la to from la to the bay that's, good. that's where we at you know what i'm saying so and follow me, Jordan Owandi, Instagram, Everyday Celebrity Media, Instagram, Everyday Celebrity PO on Twitter, Everyday Celebrity Media Company dot com, where you can buy my merch. And uh yeah. This is Everyday Celebrity Podcast, season two, episode seventeen, featuring Dominic, the fashion designer of the world. And we are out. Any last words? Nah, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, we are out. You.